afternoon, students, and welcome to Ancient Athletics. I'm your professor, Dr. Rob Steffen, and I'd like to welcome each and every one of you to the only sports show out there that's been a cool 5,000 years in the making. Now, you better buckle up and pay attention. We've got literally thousands of years of sports highlights to cover over the course of a single short semester. And that's even less if you're doing this as a seven-week course or a summer course or the wind sprint that is the winter session. So bear down, get ready for a wild ride through the world of ancient athletics. Now, this lecture is all about setting the scene. And as we go through it, I'll be giving you an introduction to the course and an overview of what to expect in each lecture. And in doing so, we'll, not, we'll talk about like kind of not just what ancient athletics actually consisted of, but why sports are so important both in the ancient and in the modern worlds. And getting at that question, right, the why question, the question of significance is absolutely crucial to understanding the power and impact of sport throughout history. So whether you're on the verge of your first Olympics or ready to go pro at Madden or NBA 2K, get ready for the intellectual workout of a lifetime as we dive into ancient athletics. Each of our lectures in this course, we're going to be starting with a series of questions, what I like to call History's Mysteries. Now, these are the questions that drive each lecture, and then in some, these are the major questions that drive the course. And this is really important, because we're not just here to learn a series of facts, right? We're here to ask deeper questions about the relationship between sport and society, to unearth and to unpack and to understand the crucial role that sports plays in culture, from the dawn of the Olympics in 776 BCE, to the bloody gladiatorial fights in the Colosseum in Rome, to the modern day gridiron, basketball court, and beyond. So our questions for today, right, our history's mysteries, revolve around the why, right? Why we study sport in the first place. I mean, aren't there better, kind of like more serious, way more boring topics to study like politics or economics and science all that kind of stuff well 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 first off i am here to tell you that the study of performance sport and spectacle right the study of ancient athletics is indeed the study of politics and religion and science and what i mean by that is that it's not just the details of each individual sporting event that's interesting to us as academics right Rather, we're interested in finding out how sports fit into the rest of society. So let's go ahead and jump into the next section and we'll take a look at some of the answers to these questions. All right, so each lecture is gonna be composed of eight short segments. We're always gonna start with what I call the starting blocks, where we lay out the theme of the day and the questions of the day. And then we'll move into five back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back content sections that are unique to each lecture, right? And these are going to start to illuminate our topic for the day and our driving questions. We'll also be discussing not just what the answer is to those questions, but how we know those answers. Now, this might seem like a little thing, right? Kind of trivial. But this is one of the huge takeaway points from this course. I want you to always be asking the question about how we know something is true. What's the evidence? What's the logic? Is it a good argument? 
or is it a lousy one based on one of many different possible logical fallacies? This is important because your ability to leverage evidence to make good arguments and your ability to distinguish good arguments from bad arguments, well, that's a skill that's going to be useful no matter what you do in the world. There are a lot of people out there spouting ridiculous things based on lousy arguments, and I want you to be able to think for yourself and spot that sort of BS from a mile away. Anyway, back to our question of the day, right? So why in the world is it useful to study sports, right? Why study something that we tend to do for fun or for relaxation? I mean, shouldn't we be studying something serious like politics or economics or science, something along those lines? And my answer to you, right, is that the study of sport, right, the study of athletics is the study of politics, and it is the study of economics, it is the study of science, it is the study of religion. Sports are such an integral part of society, today and in the ancient Greco-Roman world, that we really can't understand society without understanding the role of sports and athletics. So let's look at a couple examples, right? Think of it this way. One of the biggest stories from the 2018 Winter Olympics was the joining of the North and South Korean women's hockey players on the same team. And likewise, back in 1971, it had been over 20 years since an American had stepped foot in China. They called it the Bamboo Curtain. Uh, now, what ends up happening here is that the first people to start breaking down those political boundaries, yeah, that's right. It was the American ping pong team. And we still call this combination of sports and politics ping pong diplomacy. Now, if you're thinking these are cherry picked examples, right? Not so fast, my friend. When you look at economics, the impact is even bigger. A recent study looked at the University of Michigan's football team, my personal alma mater, and the impact that it had on the local economy. Now, during the 2013 season with a mere seven home games, this study concluded that the net impact was over $80 million, just seven home games. In that same year, over $4.5 billion was spent on university licensed merchandise, shirts and hats and all that good stuff that you're probably wearing right now. That is billion with a B. Now, when it comes down to it, sports are really interesting to look at academically precisely because people very rarely do look at them academically, right? Sports feel as though they should be something fun and relaxing, something to enjoy in one's free time. But when you think about how integral they are to our lives and the enormous impact they have on other segments of society, it is amazing how little scholarly research has been focused on sport and spectacle, and especially on ancient athletics. And in many ways, sport can serve as a microcosm, right, for our world where competition leads to winners and losers, where commercialization is increasingly omnipresent, and where exorbitant salaries and the distribution of wealth are prime topics of debate, where drugs and loyalty and corruption, they all play a major role, and we will see that in the ancient world as well as the modern world. All right, so we've seen so far that our lectures will begin with some driving questions. And then we'll follow those up with deep dives into the ancient evidence to address those questions. And there's no way you can understand the world of ancient athletics without learning about the spaces and places involved in sports, both in ancient Greece and in ancient Rome. So frequently, we'll be spending a lot of time discussing locations, right? These could be broad regions such as mainland Greece or the Italian peninsula. Or they could be individual city-states like Athens or Sparta. Or they could be specific monuments within those city-states, right? Like the stadium at Olympia or the Colosseum in Rome. Whatever the scale, understand that the physical spaces, right, where sports took place, they give us a unique insight into what that experience would have been like, both for the athletes or who, who are participating as well as for the spectators in the stands. Okay, now this is going to be really cool for a couple reasons. So first of all, you're going to develop an extremely in-depth understanding of some of the most important archaeological sites throughout the ancient Mediterranean. And who doesn't want to become an expert on something as awesome as the Circus Maximus, right? But second, understanding specific sites and the locations, right, that are integral to sports in the ancient world, that's going to give you a unique perspective about how sport is tied to place, right? How the landscape and the topography and the built environment 
all shape the human, human interactions that take place within the realm of sport. And finally, this kind of place-based approach will give you a really good sense for the ways in which the sites and locations of sport and antiquity compare and contrast with those in the modern world. All of a sudden, at the next football game you go to, you're going to be looking around the stadium and the seating and the archways, and you're going to be thinking of all the different ways that this parallels the locations and the monuments and the buildings of ancient athletics more than 2,000 years ago. Now, in many of our lectures, we'll also take a deep dive into particular individuals, often some of history's most world-renowned athletes. People I like to call the big ballers of antiquity. Now, you can think of this as kind of a person-based approach to ancient athletics, right? In contrast with a site-based approach. So for example, we might zoom in on uh, ancient Olympia's most famous victors, right? So we've got Koroibos of Elis, the humble baker who took first place at the very first Olympics in 776 BC. We might look at Kaniska, the first female athlete to ever win an event at the ancient Olympics. And that's not because women weren't very good athletes. Instead, married women, they were banned from the uh, Olympics altogether. And if they attended, if they broke that rule, they were thrown off of a cliff. So you've got to stay tuned to figure out how Kaniska was able to win an event at a set of games where women weren't even allowed to watch. Now, in addition to giving you the inside scoop on some of history's most dominant athletes, this kind of close-up look at individual competitors will give you a good sense for the role that athletes played in society. Much like the modern world, ancient athletes were sometimes literally seen as heroes with abilities beyond those of mere mortals. And at the same time, uh, we'll see that the gladiators of the, the ancient Roman world, right, they could kind of occupy this very contentious or paradoxical position within society. They were stigmatized and legally banned from various aspects of society. But at the same time, they were incredibly loved by the masses and they became sex symbols desired by Rome's most powerful elite. So keep both of these things in mind as we look at the big ballers of antiquity, right? Get a sense for the stories surrounding each of the individual athletes, but also consider that larger role that athletes play in society. Now, like I mentioned earlier, we're not just here to focus on what happened. We want to take a deep dive into how we know what happened, and to do that, we need to hone in on the ancient evidence that informs us of these aspects of ancient athletics. So in most lectures, we'll learn about the ancient evidence that tells us about sport and spectacle in the Greco-Roman world. It could be an artifact, it could be an ancient text, a scrap of papyrus, or part of an ancient building, right? All these things provide us with evidence for the role of athletics in the ancient Greco-Roman world. Now, this is absolutely one of the most important parts of these lectures because this is where you get to take an in-depth look at how we know what we know. So you'll see that our understanding of ancient athletics isn't because Homer or Herodotus or some other ancient dude left us a textbook on ancient athletics, right? Instead, our modern understanding of sport in the ancient world, that ends up actually getting cobbled together from a variety of types of evidence. Right? each of which has its own strengths and weaknesses. So think about it, right? A written text might give you an incredibly detailed account of a given event. And that is awesome, that's fantastic, right? Homer's description of the funeral games of Patroclus in the Iliad, it is absolutely crucial for our understanding of early competitive sport. But written texts often focus on only the very elite of society because so few people were literate and could read or write. Now, archaeological artifacts, on the other hand, they often do a much better job of showing us how regular people lived, right? Because everybody had stuff, and that stuff gets left behind. But while it can tell us about regular people, it's often difficult to tease out the same level of detail that we get in the texts. So as you unearth these ancient texts and artifacts, right, think about the strengths and weaknesses of each type of evidence and how that impacts our reliability when it comes to what we know about ancient athletics. Okay, so finally, 
Uh, we're going to close each lecture with what I call past meets present, right? A look at how ancient athletics has influenced sport and society in the modern world. The parallels are sometimes pretty obvious, right? So the Olympics of Greek antiquity were revived, for example, a little more than a century ago, and they continue to serve as a peaceful gathering for politically independent nations once every few years. The scale of sport has also remained impressive from antiquity to modernity, right? From the 50,000 seat Colosseum to the 150,000 seat Circus Maximus, Rome brought us entertainment on a truly massive scale. And that's a scale that feels right at home with today's 100,000 capacity football stadiums, right? On game day, for example, Nebraska's Memorial Stadium, right, on game day, becomes the third largest city in the entire state of Nebraska. While Penn State's Beaver Stadium becomes the fourth largest city in Pennsylvania, and Michigan Stadium becomes the fifth largest city in Michigan on game day. And what goes on in those football stadiums? Violence, right? Just like we get, well, not just like we get, but kind of, sort of like we get with the violence inside the ancient Roman amphitheaters. It's not hard to think of the screams of the crowd on Super Bowl Sunday as fitting very easily within the walls of Rome's Colosseum. So really use this section, right? Use this past meets present section to reflect on what you've learned about the ancient world and consider how it continues to impact the modern world. My sense is that in doing so, you're gonna get an even better sense for just how important sport was in antiquity and still is in the broader context of modern society. All right, you have made it to the end of today's lecture. And we've seen today that this course is going to use athletics as a way to investigate the broader realms of Greco-Roman society and culture. And in doing so, we'll see that sport is intimately tied to nearly every aspect of the ancient world. Military and religion, politics and economics, science and medicine, family and culture, sport is tied to all these things. Now, as we go through our lectures, we're going to start by asking a series of questions that drive our investigation. And then we'll start to answer those questions by drawing on a variety of types of evidence from the ancient world. We'll take a deep dive into the spaces and places that held athletic events in the ancient world. We'll investigate individual athletes, right, the big ballers of antiquity, to get a sense for how these played out on an individual level. We'll spend time discussing the evidence, too, so that you know not just what we know, but how and why we know these things were actually the case. And finally, we'll conclude with some thoughts on the way that ancient sports have impacted the modern world. Now, I know the argument at the beginning of this was that one of the re like main reasons to study ancient athletics is because they impact the rest of society, right? And that is absolutely true. But let's not forget our initial interest either, right? Sport is fun and it is relaxing and it is a great way to build relationships and forget about work for a second, right? It's a great way to challenge yourself and it's a great way to have an overall wonderful time. So I hope you do the same in this course, right? Work hard, challenge yourself, learn and improve and definitely have some fun too. You can do all those things in ancient athletics. <laughs>